On this week's Baz and Andrew's House of Rugby, we'll be talking about JJ's kahunas and Coetze's <laughs> kablumas. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you, kablumas. Can't get that name right. What the hell is wrong with me? We'll talk about Rory Best and Darren Cave hanging up the boots. We'll talk about Leinster heading uh, to Newcastle to play uh. Saracens. We'll talk about Game of Thrones. Yeah, we'll get through all the rugby. Mm, yeah. ASAP. We'll get Shanners on the line. Shanners, the pirate, Queen Rider on the phone. <laughs> we'll talk about sprint training with the Sprint Whisperer and loads more. And we'll also um, present some uh, rumours. Yes. Rumour mill. Yeah, new, new segment. Rumour Roundup. Joe presents Baz and Andrew's House of Rugby. Together with Guinness. Hello and you're very welcome to Baz and Andrew's House of Rugby here on Joe Together with Guinness. It's Sunday afternoon, the bank holiday weekend. Trimby and I are sitting on the couches, a little bit depressed that we're not out in the sunshine like the rest of you. We hope you've had a fabulous weekend though. How class is, is Ireland? Just like sh throwing bank holiday weekends out like they're just oh, for the crack. Like they're going out of date. Yeah, we've had three in the last month and now we're gonna have another one in a few weeks. When, whenever you introduce yourself to the cameras, I've never uh, noticed this before, but that middle camera is quite, uh, there's a black background, it's quite far away and it's quite hard to see. Yeah. And it's quite atmospheric in here. And this is a little bit like maybe what um, the Unsullied saw whenever. Yes. Just Pat staring back. <laughs> Pat, <laughs> the, the Dothraki. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, I, I wasn't too sure about the Dothraki scene. That, yeah. that, was, that pissed me off a little bit because... The Dothraki are badass mother feckers. Yeah. And they, they kill everyone. They're like the best, you know, the best of the best. And they go off with their lit, lit up swords yeah. to fight them. And then... It looked promising. Yeah. And then they just disappear like that. Yeah. Which was, she suggests that whoever they met at the front line were way beyond what we thought they were going to be. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't. It was just the feckin' dead lads. Yeah. And we never, actually, we never actually got to see what happened. Jorah. Sir, yeah. Sir Jorah came back. back. Didn't he say anything? Like, yeah. Not to worry. Yeah. Didn't work out. That was a bit silly because, yeah. like, Sam was killing them like Sam, like nobody. Yeah, but the Dothraki were struggling. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking, there's, there's, there's just, there's inconsistencies yeah. all over the place. But we just, we never got to see anything that happened, and it, it seems like HBO said, right, let's have this class dragon scene let's have this class um, scene at the end where Arya does her thing let's have red woman fire everywhere mm. oh crap we've run out of budget how are we gonna throw, show the Dothraki scene let's just do lights <laughs> <laughs> less lights less lights just black this. yeah they go off and then just the, the lights extinguish and that's that sorted yeah. we'll move on <laughs> yeah blown out a few candles done yeah that's it I'd be so disappointed if I was Dothrakian yeah yeah were you Dothraki up north for a while? I had you. I had you had us. You were hearing yeah. us about uh, to a few families. Fair play to Jack Carty. He got so much of that shit right, didn't he? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Impressive. Yeah, he knows his stuff. Yeah. Um, we're gonna have Dave Shannon on the show again later on. Yeah. Because he was so bad last week. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's gonna he's, redeem himself. See if he's improved at all. So he's gonna be on in part three to talk us through what happened last week in that. Uh, kind of famous episode and what's going to happen next week. Mm -hmm. um, we also have a look at the Guinness Pro 14 quarterfinals uh, and up the road to the Champions Cup final between Leinster and Saracens next week. We've got your Made More Player of the Weekend and we tackle your Twitter questions and chat to our Game of Thrones correspondent, Ulster Scrum Half, David the Pirate Shanahan <laughs> after riding the Queen. Um, but first of all... Um, I love, you weren't working at the Ulster match, you were you no. weren't doing comms. No. I thoroughly, as per usual, enjoyed uh Robbo's commentary. Yeah. He's uh he's just a happy crack. He just enjoys it, doesn't he? Fun loving person, yeah. yeah. He's just such a pleasure to listen to. But a lot of people pointed out on Twitter that he was uh stealing from us. Yeah, he was bit. robbing our lines. Yeah. But I, I think that's like, as someone else pointed out, it's just flattery is the best compliment or sorry, uh in, uh, I think I know what you mean. Um, yeah. imitation. Imitation, imitation is the best form of flattery. So thank you, uh, Robbo. What he oh, did thanks. say, so he said, I mean, <laughs> how bad must it be that he's, <laughs> he's stealing knowledge from us? <laughs> like, if I want rugby knowledge, I'll go to 
Murray Kinsler, someone that's like... No, we would be the last people <laughs> yeah. to consult. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Rambo's listening to us <laughs> for his rugby knowledge. So he, he copied me on the Darren Cave coming up, uh, shutting down everything in 13 and how good he is at that. Yeah. Which I was like, brilliant, take it, it's yours. Fine. And then he took yours for the John Cooney house party from last week. Yeah, he said he moved house. Yeah, which he defended himself on Twitter to say he did. Yeah. Um, but like, thank you, Robbo, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. He also used a great word, diminutive. Wow. To describe <laughs> Rob Little, uh -huh. <laughs> which I, I just thought that was brilliant. Do you know what diminutive means? Do you want me to give it a go? Yeah. Because <laughs> <Okay. laughs> I, I had to Google the definition. Diminutive. <laughs> First of all, mispronunciation. Um, <laughs> diminutive. Um, uh, a small physical stature, yeah. but quite a large heart. Okay, yeah. Is that close? It just said extremely and unusually small <laughs> on, on Google, which is such a funny thing, way to describe a uh, rugby player. Yeah. I wonder, did he have that in his head going in, or did he just... Yeah. He's got sheets and sheets of notes. Is he that yeah. prepared? Yeah, he's a machine. Like I'd hate to be called diminutive. <laughs> <laughs> Such kicking the balls. Yeah. Does he have that much preparation? You were quite diminutive. I was not. <laughs> you were a little diminutive. Was lanky, like. <laughs> Unusually small. <laughs> I'm skinny. Yeah. It's definitely a different term for that. Um, we'll get Robbo to come up with a term. Yeah, I love it. I had. Uh, do you can ever hear a guy called. Go on. Go on. <laughs> Robbo, if you're watching, can you please describe Barry? <laughs> <laughs> and make it derogatory. <laughs> please. I think we can. Uh, I'd love if we could influence what Robbo says every week. Yeah. Just get him. get him to sneak in a couple of... Just get him to say buzzwords. I had this... Uh, do you ever hear Pat Spillane? He's a famous Kerry footballer from like the 70s, would he? Pat Spillane, 70s and 80s? 70s, 80s, yeah. Absolute character, man. Legend. He does a lot of punditry work on Ferrati and uh, commentating and stuff. And I met him in Abu Dhabi a few years ago. We were at a festival and he was over there as well and we ended up going on the piss with him. And me and our, uh, our drummer, Dermy, we were getting a taxi from one pub to the next and Pat's Blam was in the front and we were in the back and he was, I think there was a Somalian guy uh, driving the taxi and he was going, where are you from? And I was like, Somalia. And he was like, I love Somalia. And he started to horror, just talking shit about Somalia. And I was like, this guy's been to Somalia loads of times. And then he said, uh, I started asking him about punditry. I was like, have you any tips? He said, buzzwords, bar. Just give him loads of buzzwords, whatever you can think of. He goes, I think like he started listing off a few buzzwords for us and like, I think one of them was irrelevant. He just says, just say irrelevant. And I had had this conversation with Owen Redden, <laughs> Redzer before about uh, using that word irrelevant. He'd used it in... In like an argument? He, he well, he's it? actually... No, your man was just using it in a commentary, like say irrelevant. And Redzer had actually said this to me before. If you use it in an interview with a journalist, it's such a powerful yeah. stance to take because it just shits all <clears> over. <throat> Yeah. Whatever the person says. Yeah, they think they're totally barking up the wrong tree. If they yeah. ask you something, you think, well, that's irrelevant at the end of the day. You're diminutive. Ooh. That's irrelevant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Reds, are, Reds are is so strategic with stuff like that. Yeah. You know what he used to do? If um, two people were chatting and someone walked in, no matter what you're talking about, he would go, well, speak of the devil. <laughs> 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 Just to make you insecure. <laughs> or the other thing he does is if, again, Two people chatting, and one person comes in, and if, if he um, pipes up, says something at all, if Redzer's in the back food, he'll say, well, what did I tell you? <laughs> As if, like, we've got this thing, yeah, we, know, yeah. we know him, yeah. we'd be talking with him. Oh, he's a sneaky little... He's one. clever, isn't he? Yeah, I've he never is. seen him in the back food. He'd be very good Game of Thrones character, man. He's, he's quite schemey. Yeah. Like that. He's got a dose of little finger. I think we get Robbo to say irrelevant, uh -huh. diminutive. <laughs> is that the word? Either? Yes. <laughs> uh, describe me anything else we could just I think that's a lot is it something ridiculous he might not have any more he might not have any more games why not don't know because he only ever seems to do the home games Ulster's home games doesn't he <sighs> yeah it'd be a shame next season though next season <laughs> try and get in something ridiculous like yeah we'll update him between yeah. now and then yeah okay <laughs> perfect uh, <clears throat> but the Ulster game you, were you at it? You yeah, just no, it? I just watched it. Um, pretty convincing win. I thought so. Yeah. I thought so. And it was like, tight in the end, but I thought 
um, Ulster were on top the whole time. Yeah. And then the intercept kind of... That was it. Yeah, you know, there wasn't much in it really. Credit to Connacht, they battled and battled, but Ulster just didn't let them play. Yeah. And they, they just, like as we talk all year about how good their attack is, and I think Rob actually said that they've completed more passes than any team in the yeah. in the league. And it's I didn't realise that. It's all those tip-ons, man. They just tip on, yeah. tip on, tip on, always go out the back door. But their defence was sensational at yeah. the weekend there. Yeah. Again, like we, like Robert pointed out about Darren Kay being able to cut off that 13 position, Marshall did it. Luke did it very of times. well, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. And obviously, Marcel Kjold said was unbelievable. Uh, yeah. Every like so obviously that back row is pretty handy as mm. it is, but or even that pack in general or the ball carriers, that pack was going really well. Their face play was good. Their shape was good. No matter how good you are, you just need a spark, and Marcel just brings a spark, mm. and he just he just turns slow ball into quick ball, mm. and for his try as well, like he did, he had no right to score that no, really, did great he? Great footwork, and yeah, he just doesn't seem to slow down. His yeah. energy doesn't. That was that seventy fifth minute. He still is powerful and yeah. gotten through so much work. Twenty four carries. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Surely he could be. Looking at a call up for the spring box. You'd have thought so. Imagine having a player like that. Yeah. Like but also, also, like Ulster's back three, I think, a big, big games. Missing uh, um, Stockdale, obviously, was, you know, a big gap in their back line, but the three young lads did absolutely unbelievable. Robert yeah. Little, diminutive as he is, was brilliant. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Robert Balakoon as well, and they, they dealt quite well with, with everything Carty had to throw at them as well. Yeah, I thought Carty was kind of. He's, he was th throwing in a, a little bit of um, a little bit of mischief with his kicking game. He was testing Michael Laurie, I thought. Hmm. I don't think uh, Michael Laurie will be tested as much in the backfield in terms of what he's the grass he's covering, uh, and he still he still dealt with it really well. Yeah. One or two went went behind him, but he picks it up and he can he can fight and use his footwork and get out of trouble that way. Hmm. Uh, and then defensively on the edge, um, Robbie Little try saving tackle. Balakun, big hit, big hits, man, yeah. man and ball. There was one, he got one wrong off a midfield scrum and then I was concerned that he would, that would maybe take um, the sting out of him a little bit. He'd be mm. more cautious, but he seemed just as confident next time around because um, Connor, a lot of a lot of their stuff kind of didn't quite work out. A few passes didn't go to hand. Execution wasn't perfect, but you can see like they threaten and you mm. have to be switched on. Wingers especially need, need to be switched on. That's two young fellas I thought he did really well. Mm. Yeah, I think Ulster kind of showed up a few weaknesses in Connacht's side. Maybe not defensively. I don't think they have the cohesion that that is needed to to beat the types, the likes of Ulster, Munster, or Leinster. <coughs> uh, there was just they were a little bit jagging in their line speed at certain times, and there wasn't huge, you know, a lot of decision make, good decision making. Yeah. Um, I think Ulster were probably un unfortunate not to score a few more points in the first. 60, 70 minutes because it was surprising that there was, it was so close after yeah. after that land. Not taking anything from Connacht away because they were showed a serious amount of heart and fight. But um, yeah, as I said, I thought they were standout players. Uh, Rory Best obviously finishing his last game at Kingspan, and Darren Caves for that matter. Um, we actually have some audio of Rory Best uh, from after the game. Is that right, Pat? Yeah, yeah. Um, Darren Cave and Rory Best both came in and. Um, Cave kind of set the scene for for best and handed it, handed it over to him and on the way out and he Cave was actually talking about if he plays two more games if they get to the final he would surpass your record as well your playing mm -hmm. record. Come on, Glasgow. <laughs> <laughs> How many is that? Uh, two two. He's on two two eight. I'm on two two nine. Two hundred and twenty eight. Honestly. Luke Marshall went down with a head injury. I was like, Lukey, would you get your finger out? Because <laughs> <laughs> did he? He didn't. Did Darren Cave finish the game? Because he came on and went back off. Yeah, didn't he? yeah. Uh, oh, are you thinking like he got two caps for that one? <laughs> <laughs> He's overtook me. <laughs> oh, he came on. He came on. Came off and then came back on again. I think so. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, so he came up first, and then Rory Best was up, and he was just talking about how. <coughs> Raven an occasion it was and he, he actually just set the scene of what it's like to to drive to the Kingspan or Ravenhill on match day as well. So it's a very very nice kind of way of describing it. Yeah, it keeps it keeps it keeps cropping up. I, I try not to think about it. Um because it just I just feel like I'm bound to get injured or bound to not get on. So um I suppose I mean if it can if other people are talking about it and if it helps the group find one extra percent of 
motivation in their preparation or in their performance, then, and then it's a positive thing. Um, I said during the week, I remember playing my first cap away to the borders in 2007, April, and I remember phoning my dad after the game, and I said, Dad, can you believe that I can say for the rest of my life that, I, that I'm an Ulster player? And while it's, it's, it's not an, a fair comparison, caps, because of the professional games taken over from the amateur game, in terms of how many fixtures there is, I'm not going to lie and say that it would be pretty satisfying to retire with the trophy and, and say that I played for Ulster more than anyone ever in the, in the history of the club. I think it was, it's a strange day because I think when you're coming back from a bit of an injury, you're kind of a little bit uncertain anyway. You just want to get into the game, you want to get started. But I think when the game's a knockout, when it's your last game at the Kingspan, you know, there's a lot of mixed emotions. And I think just waking up this morning, you, you just wanted to get to 5.35 and, and just get the thing started and get underway. It felt like a, a long enough day, but yeah, look, it was... I think in terms of, of a gutsy performance and, and a win, I think it's something we can be really proud of. Well, look, I sad to see Connacht drop out, but um, great season for them in fairness um, and a lot of good rugby, so fair play. Uh, I was at the Munster game yesterday, squeaked through, obviously. A um, lot of people saying that Treviso deserved to win, yeah. which I don't necessarily agree with, but I have to say fair play to them. They, like, they play class. <laughs> they had a great season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they were brilliant all season. They were one of, I think they were your favourite team all year, were they to watch? Yeah, I think that it's just towards the end of the season, the last kind of six or eight weeks, they've been unbelievable. So you were sad to see them? I was. Lose. I was gutted. Okay. I honestly was so gutted. So you think they should have won? I do. I thought they were better. Really? For long periods, I thought they were better. It's typical monster, though, and you can't, you can't kind of quantify that. Yeah, you know how like Leinster and Munster they just win games that they mm. maybe don't even deserve to win the Leinster, Leinster win in the quarter final against Ulster I thought Ulster were better that day but it still doesn't mean you, you, just, you should win you know yeah. what I mean because there's something about that you can't put a price on that and uh, Munster they, they dug deep and that to be fair that kick from Hunter Hunt at the end was ridiculous it was, wasn't it even yeah. being brought back that yard by yeah. <clears throat> Nigel Owens I was like fuck you yeah. Nigel Owens you're yeah brought back and then tapped on the shoulder yeah like because in fairness it wasn't a penalty I think we can all agree that CJ Stander was off that his was feet the one, that was the one where CJ yeah. Oh, yeah yeah. so it was and he brought it forward not only that but he brought it forward 10 metres for a bit of descent from one of the trophies players so, oh I didn't spot that right so it went from being on the Munsters 10 metre line to being on the halfway line so then when he went a yard further, it was like, then he brought him back. It was fuck, serious drama. Um, so, yeah, I felt bad for them because it wasn't a penalty. But, um, yeah, fair balls for, for JD to stand up there yeah. and kick an unbelievable kick. Like. Yeah, actually, because um, when I was chatting to CJ Stander and, and, and Johan van Graan, there was a, a Pro 14 thing there, there today ahead of the awards. And van Graan actually got, he got goosebumps as he was talking about JJ's kick. Go away. Because he was talking about, like, the... The guy stepped up and he said he immediately he was going to take it as well and yeah. so yeah he got he got really into you know what it meant for him to take a kick but um, CJ actually talked about the winning that uh, penalty at the end so we could probably hear that and then you guys can yep. talk about JJ Stones. Yeah, I think it's a thing that I've worked with um, with the coach as well, trying to um, bring something different to my game you know, and it's something I probably had but I haven't really worked on in, in the last few years so. Yeah, look, uh, before that I gave away two uh, penalties, i say uh, a few of them was maybe 50-50, but I was trying to just make sure I can have an impact in the game, and look, it could have gone any way, but it went all way, and I think for JJ to step up and take that, that's, that, that's balls. Yeah. yeah that's <laughs> big balls. Um, for lads, as it was, um, Rory's done it earlier in the season, and JJ now, and, and just, you have, and then Connor stepping up during the season as well. Lads that are actually willing to kind of put the responsibility on their shoulders would be, you know, a great thing for the squad as well. Yeah, I think it's something they work on um, as well a lot. You know, I think that's a place where we wanted to improve as a team. And look, I played uh, out of fly off when I was younger, but now I would never put my hand up if someone asked me to kick like that. And, uh, Murray in the semi-final against Saracens, what a kick. Um, Rory, I remember that Glasgow game, just to take it away from him and this weekend, JJ. It's a big kick um, and it just shows if you get, have confidence in your training, you can do it, you know, and it's great. Yeah, it was, uh, it was an unbelievable kick. Um, and to come off the bench, I think he's been brilliant for them over the last few, the last few months, just injecting a little bit of speed and a bit of creativity. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, look, I understand why people thought 
Treviso should have won. Um, but have, I watched it back this morning and like Munster completely controlled the first half. Treviso got into their 22 once in the 39th minute That's and got a try. Yeah. Munster in the first 25 minutes had like four or five opportunities to score. Darren Sweetnam should have gotten over in the corner, but um, uh, darted back inside a pass from behind him. <coughs> Ty Byrne dropped on and the uh, and I knocked on right on the line and luckily CJ was held up. This actually CJ was held up right the line. It was a funny one and the whoever it was for Treviso ripped the ball out of his hands, but his knees had touched the ground. So it was a it was a tackle basically. It was a maul, but then yeah. it went to a tackle. Yeah. But I always found that rule is a grand rule, but then when it comes to on the try line, right? Yeah. So he's holding him up on the try line. Sorry, was his upper was his upper body was his, the ball over the try line? He was just coming towards the try line, so he's about just before it. CJ, his knees hit the ground. Yeah. So but the did rules Nigel, say had, had Nigel called them all though. No, it was still it was it was only held up for a second, and he was going forward. But the rules would be if you're if you if your knees touch the ground, yeah. then you're supposed to let go of the player. Yeah. But if you let go of the player there, he's just going to score a try because it's down the line. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't know. I think there should be a different rule once it crosses the five meter line where yeah. it can be a little bit more. But no one ever gets. It never gets. Um, no one ever calls a maul apart from <laughs> Chris Farrell <laughs> against Saracens. Did he? Um, the one that you were giving oh, off sorry. about on yeah, Twitter, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but that rarely happens yeah, yeah. because when you're getting close to the line, no one holds them up anymore because then the chances are they'll drive you over and then you'll just concede a scrum on five metre anyway. Yeah. So everyone kind of just, they kind of recall out of it. It never usually happens that way, does it? Do you understand what I'm saying? That close to the line, though, yeah. they're trying to get the ball down on the line, right? So yeah, if you no, let but, them go, they can fall over the line. Yeah, but you know the way guys go high, mm. go on, like when they're if they go high, even when they're picking and going, no one ever gets mauled. Then that never happens. No one get, ever gets choke yeah, tackled. Yeah. Then they always kind of find a way of getting ground. That's funny, yeah. I don't know why that happens. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, it's a fu it's a funny area. Um, and look, the ball was turned over and Munster got a penalty for. But my point was that they had plenty of opportunities to score. They'd be very disappointed. Yeah. Flack came on it on the commentary halfway through the first half and said that we've created a lot of chances um, we haven't asked enough questions though and it was that matter they weren't able to convert the tries but they were actually creating chances and um, <coughs> Treviso's two wingers like uh, e Tyrava Vakade Yara uh, so who did you say? <laughs> Tyrava wasn't it? Vak no not Vak Vakatawa Tabiara <laughs> like he scored unbelievable <laughs> <laughs> that's the guy you scored in the corner no I think it was Taviara I think scored that's the, it you know, it's Taviara yeah. <laughs> you continue there and I'll find out was it do <laughs> Tiger Woods <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah he showed like, those guys can just score and I think Monster probably just missing a little bit of, I don't know if it's a confidence thing or it's definitely a pressure thing as well when you're playing at home you're expected to win Monster are carrying a lot of pressure there yeah um, it's a spark it's um, Taviara created a spark remember I was saying like I could see it no matter how good and well organised you are you need a spark from mm. something Yeah, you need a, just a wee bit of X factor yeah. Charles Piatoy would have been that for Ulster last year really yeah and then Marcel James Lowe doing it for Leinster yeah exactly yeah yeah, yeah I think potentially or like obviously Earlsey and Carberry are missing for Munster to the the big sparks they have yeah um, and I think that's that's where they were lacking at the weekend yeah um, Treviso then did fight back well in the second I don't half know why. <laughs> I don't know why. why are you laughing you don't know, I don't know. <laughs> just a lot of sparks Taviara is correct thank yeah. you uh, it's yes. a win win it's a uh, Ratuva Taviara yeah they were both class made some brilliant breaks in the second half yeah um, but uh, just couldn't convert a few drop balls and stuff just the last pass yeah and then the two drop goals at the end god you'd be uh, it was sick and for missing that. Yes, like. I think they shouldn't have even gone into the drop goal pattern. I, I, they started, they were getting good momentum mm. and they were getting gain lines and they were keeping the ball quick and it's like they slowed the ball down themselves because they thought, right, we've got in this position now, yeah. let's get into a drop goal pattern. But if they just kept doing what they were doing, yeah, they probably would have been in a better position. Having mm. said that, if Munster were in the position that they needed uh, a drop goal to win the game, they probably would have got it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? They would. They took off Tommaso Allen, right? Yeah. Did he get injured or what happened? No, he was going mental on the sideline. 
freaking out um, because they took him off. So I was like, my dad was with my dad and, and his mate who uh, are hilarious people to watch matches. They were just coming out with the most batshit crazy stuff. And my dad's mate actually was wearing his daughter's sunglasses, which were brilliant. They're big, huge <laughs> oh, I saw female this. sunglasses. Yeah. I was like, you wearing your wife's sunglasses? They're Christina's. <laughs> It only costs three euro. Can't find my ones. <laughs> so I loved it. He's gotten himself to this stage where he just doesn't give a fuck. But uh, they were coming up with a few conspiracies that, um, that yeah, he was, he was uh, injured or he was feigning an injury or something. But I was thinking that whoever they brought on, I can't remember who they brought on. but see, just, just uh, 20, he, number 22 for that. He's yeah. got to be some sort of a drop goal yeah. uh, expert. Uh, uh. They're bringing him up. <laughs> he far from it. not. <laughs> Yeah, it was a pathetic effort, and I could see yeah. he was shitting himself. Like he didn't want it. It was no. there for them a few times. Yeah, um, and they uh, were too slow. They they just, I suppose, like the perfect example is Matt Dawson, <laughs> two thousand and three. Mm. You know, kind of just going and then just quick ball and then like, hitting Wilkinson Back. whenever you weren't yeah. expecting it, maybe, or yeah. you just wouldn't have as many guys kind of looking to charge it down. Yeah. But it's like they just went, okay, we're gonna go to him now. <laughs> yeah. He's gonna drop a goal. So everybody ready? ready? <laughs> Go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a pretty uh, pathetic effort. But they did get a second attempt, and then I was like, "Fuck!" It was it was good because it was a boring enough game, so it gave it a, a nice finish. Yeah. Um, but yeah, squeaky bomb time. Um, Van Gran also took off Ty Byrne and Connor Murray quite early in the second half. Yeah. So it was strange because they were behind both times. Um, but look, a win's a win. One of those ones, and uh, move on to a huge semi final. In that. Is that going to be the RDS? That's the RDS, yeah. Why won't they play it in the Aviva? I think maybe it's like end of season fatigue almost. Like, like they, they, probably, they wouldn't sell it out. Like, so is it worth the, right. the effort? Or, or even again, they have to, they'd have to book it pretty late. You know, like it's only confirmed now. Okay. So the Aviva could have something else on. Oh, okay. Beyonce could be coming to town or something like that. Or um, <laughs> could be anything on the go. Okay, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> I say that in a weird way. Beyonce. What is it, one? One of them singers or dancers or something. <laughs> okay, right. We'll be back with a look at the upcoming Champions Cup final at St. James's Park next weekend between champions Leinster and two times winners Saracens. But to take us there, our friend Jenny Murphy uh, has a new podcast called Play by Play uh, with Neve McAvoy, and we're going to hear from them right now. Keen Healy put up a post saying, you know, any chance the girls can get some um, tickets for... Oh, it's Keen Healy, yeah. yeah. Oh, so funny. And they, I think, somebody put back like, yeah, no worries, we'll get the girls tickets if you do a music video from one of the acts that's playing in Electric Picnic. <laughs> oh, no. <That's> amazing. <laughs> so, cue, right? So, one of the guys, Sam, was playing the piano, fake playing the piano, and then there was steam coming up from behind the piano. <laughs> now, later we found out it was a kettle being boiled constantly and Keen Healy in a wig and then just giving, blaring out Bonnie Tyler like an amazing lip sync. Ah, yeah. That's way better than what the Arsenal lads <laughs> did. Was like. Okay, welcome back uh, to the Champions Cup final preview. Now, let's get down to business. Not that excited, really. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to be. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's our job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the matchups are interesting, like the sorry, go on, you were saying? I don't know, I feel obliged to to yeah. at least I'm excited that it's in St James's Park. Yeah. I like it's a good Something, stadium. I suppose, isn't it? Newcastle's a good city. Owen Farrell versus Johnny Sexton. That would be good. Furlong versus Vonapolo, Conan versus Vonapolo, Viggles versus McGrath, William Jim. versus Kearney. So on. J James Ryan versus uh, Toji. Yes. George versus Cronin. It's loads. It's Carney versus Good. Or Liam Williams. Yeah, I think you'll probably play in the wing. Anyway. Yeah, it's going to be an unbelievable game. <laughs> I hope so. the nitty gritty so. there. Yeah. For a second. <laughs> <laughs> uh, James yeah. Lowe has to start, obviously. Yes, I think we're both massive fans of his. Yeah. We're big fans of Jim, uh, Jim Gibson, Jameson Gibson Park as well. Yeah, but yeah, well, drawing on what we said earlier on, yeah. you got to have that X factor, and James Lowe can win you a game. Mm, I agree. Um, they're going to be they're very similar teams, very similar uh, styles, I suppose. Yes, but I think um, Saracens 
are sli- are just slightly more structured than uh, Leinster. Mm-hmm. And I think Saracens are just ever so slightly just more of a machine and just more dogged and just execute slightly better with more consistency. I think their defence is a little bit better. I, this is only going on the two semi, semi-final performances. Mm-hmm. Leinster were very close to getting back to where they were, but I thought Saracens were ridiculous against Munster. Mm-hmm. Did you think so? I did. <clears throat> I thought they were they're beatable. I think when you say defence was, was incredible, I thought I thought there's holes in it, like, you know. Um I think like how would you think Leinster I just could think, beat them? Um well <laughs> probably by doing what Leinster do best and just hold on to the ball yeah. for long periods, keep being being quite um uh clever with their phase play. Um yeah. when they go out the back they stay tucked, they keep the passes short and sharp so they can't allow Saracens to get those big kind of momentum swinging. Um, defensive um, big hits behind the gain line that kind of stuff um, so yeah I'm not saying Saracens are going to go out and hammer them definitely not I just think Saracens for me are slight favourites mm. slight yeah. favourites slight favourites I'd agree I think I mean if Sexton continues to get better as he like he has he was brilliant last in the semi-final he's going to be the key for me obviously for Leinster he's the talisman if he plays well I, I don't know. I think they'll um, be very hard to beat. That relentless... I think they could be fitter than than Saracens. That kind of relentless play to just keep breaking them down. Mm-hmm. I think that could stand to them. Um, I think we've audio Pat, have we, from Josh van der Fleer. Yeah, he was, um, he was at those Pro 14 Awards as well. So himself and Philip uh, Contepomi were there and they were just Philip. talking about... <laughs> <laughs> Philip Contepomi. <laughs> Oh, you guys pronounce the E at the end of his <laughs> uh, Yeah, so we can hear from him. He was just talking about, he said he's hope he's going to be back on the field training soon, but uh, just asked him about what can he do for a team, you know, in the, these coming weeks. And I was saying uh, one of them might even be just that he took, took one for the team and just chatted to us media fools there today. So, um, yeah, we can listen to him now. I thought they played brilliantly. Um, they're a very dangerous team. Um, Thought they played played really nice rugby, looked really dangerous in attack, and because they were uh, they were pretty good against us in the ODS and every time we played them for the last couple of years, um, and they're really they've really improved hugely this year, and they're uh, yeah I think you definitely can't underrate them, and I think um, having seen them this year, I think everyone will be um, really understand the threat they they have for for next season, and yeah they were. They were unlucky, but then again, Munster did very well to to get a win. That's kind of the end of the day what it's about. Munster are through, so um, yeah, Treviso are pretty impressive, but Munster did well to grind out the win. I would say it's it's every game you have to keep the ball because the the more the more you have the ball, the more chances you have to score and and themselves not to score. You know, rugby CC, you play with or without the ball. The more you have the ball. Uh, the more chances you have to 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 score and, and not allowing allowing them to score, uh, you can't defend for 80 minutes against a team like Saracens, you know, because it's it's very tough. But it will be crucial, uh, obviously, if, if we can have the ball, the more time we can. But it's it will be crucial what we do without the ball as well, you know. So it's it's a it's a we have we'll we'll have to be at our best performance of the year to, to beat Saracens that's the truth ok that's uh, Philip Contepomi there <laughs> and, <laughs> and JDF um, so there yeah they're going to play the Leinster way keep the ball um, obviously you know I, I think this could come down to one score I don't think there's going to be a huge difference between either team um, kick of a ball bounce of a ball the who, throw of a ball <laughs> 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 Or a missed tackle, or something. <laughs> rugby, yeah. general rugby. Yeah. Should win in the end. <laughs> um, yeah, look, it's, 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 you can't really speculate on these things. I have no idea who it's going to be. I can't. <laughs> Do you have any idea? You going to no. go? Yeah. I, I, I'm going to go Saracens by two points. Okay, done. Um, Saracens did come off beating, uh, having beaten Exeter at the weekend. A mm-hmm. um, couple of big wins for them, so they'll have a little bit of a... Did you see Steenson getting bounced? No. By um, the big Australian second oh, Will Skelton. Yeah, hilarious. Go away. <laughs> yeah, he, he found himself in the backfield, and uh, Austin Healy actually made the point. 
he should be more experienced to find himself in that position. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> One skeleton makes a line break, <laughs> and he just charged at him. He, he, he made a line him. break. Yeah. So there was a good distance between the two. Yeah. Guys. Oh, he got a, he got a head of steam up. Oh no. Bounced him and then offloaded. He's so big. Man. I know. I know. Yeah. He's massive. Fair play to Stinson, even giving it a go. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Is he retiring at the end of the year? Is he keeping going? Do you know? Uh, there's been, I think it was his testimonial year, wasn't it? So there's a lot of stuff going on for that, but I think he'll keep going, yeah, because he's still tipping mm. away, yeah. He's a hero over there. He is. They love him over yeah, there. Yeah, I met him in uh, after the Monster match in Dunn Park, and uh, he's set up his, he's bought a pub. Built, yeah. Yeah, he started his own little business. He's fucking, he's there on here for life, like. Yeah. 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 So. Fair play. Yeah. Nah, he's a good guy. The one that got away. Mm. Um, we go to the rugby roundup. Just like that, okay. Yeah. Uh, rugby, rugby rumors. Rugby. <laughs> this is exactly what it is. <laughs> do you remember what I said about that? <laughs> we should introduce it that way. Yeah. Come here, do it. Here. Do you hear what they said about you, man? Run again. What? He might be going to Irish. Russia. Oh, yeah. With Jono. Jono Gibbs. Jono yeah. Gibbs. Yeah, that's what they're saying. Ah, yeah. What do you think? I think fair play to him. Yeah. So he's he's dying to get back to France, is he? Oh, Sounds like it. Yeah. That's what I heard. Like, I thought oh, I thought you had suggested we were going to get the golden ticket. We were going to get O'Gar O'Connell. That's what I thought. But the Looking are... after the Monster <laughs> Academy. Both of them are staying in France by the looks of it. O'Connell's staying as well. I think so, yeah. What? I thought he came home. I said, oh, he's still no talks of it yet. Like, No, he's. I think he's just going to have the crack. Really? <laughs> <laughs> just stay in France. <laughs> Will we go to France? Do you want to? <laughs> yeah. I don't speak French. Si, si. That's... <laughs> Um, any other new rumours? Um, do you want to make one up? <laughs> <laughs> I met uh, the Sprint Whisperer from last week. Do you yeah. you mentioned him? Yeah, what did Fla call him? His name is Tom Cummins. Uh -huh. So obviously, cumbag. <laughs> <laughs> Which is awful. Because you forget that that's his nickname, that it's an inappropriate nickname when you introduce him to people. Yeah, and he'll be... Just, He'll be, he'll be. He'll have mixed feelings if we're getting a shout out. Yeah, he, I met him yesterday. He was delighted with the last week's shout out because yeah. we praised him for being the sprinter whisperer, where he was basically teaching all the rugby players in Ireland how to be faster. Yeah. Um. So we had to bring him back a little bit and give him. Yeah. Give him a poor, nick, <laughs> poor nickname. Yeah. <laughs> we actually had a, a masseur. Did you ever work with Paul Bald? No. He's. <laughs> he has no hair he's Paul McMahon <laughs> and he was like I think he might have he came in and he's no hair and he, he came in and he and I think I might have said or he may flat made it said to him I'm, I'm training with comeback in the afternoon he said Jesus the nicknames what are you going to call me Paul Paul <laughs> and, <laughs> then, <laughs> and then it became Paul B-A-L-D so uh, yeah he's still Paul um, but yeah the sprinter whisper is delighted and we got a few tweets about people who were very interested to hear how good he was yeah. at teaching us. So um, <clears throat> Tommy was, I th I'm, there's a placard down in UL, I actually passed it this morning on my, my nature walk. And it says that he's one of the four in the Irish relay team that wa that set the new Irish record in Sydney in, when was the Sydney Olympics? Two thousand and oh, when we were in school, on the button, was it? yeah, yeah. So he was one of those that said he still holds the record. Um, just a freakishly fast dude. But um, yeah, the train, the speed training for me was why it was the most enjoyable. Was you could measure it so so yeah. well. Like I used to, we we had such. Back a, in your day, though, it would have been a stop clock, <laughs> wouldn't it? <laughs> stop watch. Go right. Cocked it up. Go. Jeez, you're very fast today. <laughs> <laughs> but you just measure it by your eyes, yeah. <laughs> Definitely faster. Um, but we had, yeah, there was like myself, Earl Z, Dowling, Paul Warwick, Wally, uh, Kieran Lewis, Dougie, Lazada. Wally, had, top. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wally and Earl Z, I think when Earl Z came in, it was like, fuck's sake. Yeah. But um, do you know, you'd like, be do, on Monday we do power sessions where it's all explosive weights, like clean and jerk or yeah, snatch. Yeah, yeah. Do 40 minutes of that. A lot of counter movement jumps and stuff like that. Yeah, Again. Clean, and, clean and jerks gone out of the game though. They don't do that anymore. Do they not? No. Why? I, I don't know. I think they think it's too technical. They do um, like concentric squats and stuff like that now, right. or jump squats or whatever. Yeah, you do spend a lot of time learning how to clean and jerk. I yeah. suppose. Whenever you can, you just get under the bar and push the bars as as high as you can. That's what's important. Yeah, just yeah. get your hips and 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 
glutes moving quick. Yeah. Um, that's interesting, yeah. And then we, we do the counter movement jumps, obviously, and, and you measure. What did you get in your counter movement jump? 42, maybe? Oh. 41, 42? <laughs> yeah. Must have been the old. <laughs> <laughs> I was much lighter, I suppose. I would float down <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like a feather. Uh, uh, yeah, I've no, been around that as well. Yeah, yes. What I love them is you go downstairs in the track in UL and we do the gates, uh, 30 meter sprints. Yeah. So they clock you on, the, on your start, clock you on 10 and clock you on 30. Um, you always would have got some fella who thought he was a bit smart. As he's coming up to the 30, he'd reach out and try and break the... Axel. <laughs> Axel was unbelievable. First of all, so it clocks you when you start. So he would, just before they Keep the chest start, he'd go back a yard. <laughs> yeah. So he'd get a run up and then he'd keep his chest in so his arm wouldn't cut through the first one. And then when he'd get to the, the third one, he'd reach out as far as he could and just try and yeah. clock it. No matter how many times Tom was like, you're only cheating yourself here like yeah, yeah. not making you faster <laughs> he didn't care like he was just like yeah just as long as I you remember um, doing um, sprints with Jared Payne one time and he he said um try with a ball so it didn't work for me anyway he said no you always run faster with the ball that doesn't make any sense to me mm. but we put a ball in Jared's hand and he got faster go away yeah it's weird yeah, I found that the sprint training a bit unusual, like what to do with your hands and stuff. Yeah. It never happens, like you're always moving or sidestepping. So, like, yeah. <laughs> I remember <laughs> Craig Gilroy tells a story about how he was um, on the bike on the mezzanine at Ulster, so you got a good view of looking down on, into the gym. Chris Henry was trying to do sprint. <laughs> And he, he has been building himself up like for his like, you know, sub max, sub max trying to get there and then eventually this was his one, he was gonna take off, took one step, <laughs> fell over <laughs> landed on his face. <laughs> and Gilly was inconsolable, he was crying his eyes out, he was laughing so hard. You can tell us the story. <laughs> Yeah, the, the, the chubbier lads would probably... Yeah. It was a bit pointless, was it? Yeah, it was, oh, yeah. What was his nickname? Ch was it Chubby? Oh, no, Chad. Chad. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, it's Chris Henry then, for anybody who doesn't know. Yeah. Was he not Chubby as well or something? There was something about him eating burgers and... Uh, um, what else was he? Oh, Hamburger Sarevi. <laughs> hamburger Sarevi. <laughs> because he, he did well in the sevens before he broke three, so they okay. called him Hamburger Sarevi. Okay. He did have other nicknames, he just can't remember them. Oh, that's great, fella. <laughs> Another retired man this yeah. year. Was that, or was that last year? Last Early year. In yeah. Early in the season. Um, any more rumours? Um, oh, we should have thought we didn't realise this was going to be a feature. Yeah, we, we didn't. We just um, do fake, fake rumours from now on. Yeah, let's do it. Um, <clears throat> we'll move on to the Guinness Made a More Irish Player of the Weekend. And here are your nominees Marcel Coetze and Kieran Treadwell of Ulster. Colby Fienga of Connacht and CJ Stander of Munster. Thanks for your, all your votes and comments. The winner is Marcel Coetze. Coetze. He was yeah. unbelievable. Okay, so we've got our uh, Game of Thrones correspondent on the line. Dave Shanahan, you're on. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, that's my, that's my new title. The, the pirate, the queen riding pirate. That's me, that's me. <laughs> so when everyone else was fighting last night, were you just, or last week, were you just riding the Queen, do you reckon? Well, 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 well it's not what we talked about last week. That's my, that's my only intention, really, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're a purist, Shanners. I don't, care, I don't care about anything else. Like. Yeah. We were thinking, we were saying before, and we could have your, your like the Sex Pistols, God, God Save the Queen. We could have you, your team tune be got by Dave Road the, Dave Road the Queen. Dave wrote the Queen. <laughs> da, da, da. He's only um, human being. Oh. <laughs> uh, Shatters, were you, were you pleased with the, the the latest episode then? I personally, I loved it. Yeah, but um, it's got it's got quite a lot of heat, hasn't it? It seems to have got a bit of heat, but yeah, I was I was pleased with it. I think because there's been yeah. such a build up, then it was always going to be it was always going to yeah, be. I think people. I, yeah, it, it was always going to be hard. I think people are kind of stuff they never sort of uh, got to see, like, got to know much about the Night King. You know, he sort of came, never said anything or anything. And he sort of died, you know? Yeah, we didn't get to know him ever, did we? <laughs> no, I, 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 I would like to get to know him a bit, yeah. yeah. Hear what he had to say. 
Yeah. yeah. But they don't talk. Uh, we, sh- we clarified that, didn't we? Yeah. Well, yeah, 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 well, well who knows? He, he never got a chance to speak now, did he? Yeah. Well, he had plenty of chances he, to speak. <laughs> He'd eight series. He'd have eight series. <laughs> yeah. He could have spoken. Do, do, do you know... When, you know what I found weird about it is like the way, um, like through sort of the whole season, like literally his facial expression never changed at all. And then like, uh, you know that bit where Daenerys tries to burn him with a dragon? Yeah. And then, uh, and he gives a little smirk. Yeah, yeah, he's smug. Yeah. I thought that was weird, like, wasn't it? I thought that was a little bit, that was a bit gimmicky, I thought. Yeah, I, I, that's one thing I thought I didn't like that much of it. Because like, to, I, like, he didn't change his facial expression at all throughout the whole season, like. I think that's irrelevant, to be honest. Yeah, probably, probably is. Yeah. <laughs> Here, um, I've got one issue. Um, obviously, uh, spoiler alert, but um, obviously, Arya saved the day. Um, yeah. But rewind five minutes, and she was uh, concussed, and she was like, she couldn't see in front of her, and like she would have feel her HIA for definite. <laughs> <laughs> and, and yet, I mean, you know yourself. Um, like Cooney got a bang in the head yesterday and then that was your chance to yeah. come in and save the day but no nah, not oh, in the yeah. Game of Thrones Cooney well, stays on and saves the day wasn't the day yeah got, got his Cooney chance now and I'm, um, I got the shepherd shot like yeah and then so Arya despite being concussed having blood all over her face nearly dying she managed she just runs out of the room and then appears flying through the air did she jump over the yeah. over the wall that that is a bit weird I, I don't what, what do you reckon happened like uh Greg was saying like the only thing she could have done is like a like a sort of flying squirrel thing, sort of off the top of Winterfell. I don't know, like where where <laughs> where'd she come from? Like could like, she not have just come down, climbed down off the wall and just strolled in? There was no one else around, was there? Oh well, there was all the other like what do you call those like deputy White Walkers? Yeah, yeah, yeah they all look the same with the long white hair. They were just having a fag over on the side. <laughs> yeah. Sure yeah, what were they, his henchmen like? What were they even doing? Yeah. Uh, look, look uh, I'm glad, did, I'm did glad, you hear, did you hear that? I'm glad, they got, sorry, go on, yeah? I was going to say, did you hear that one about, uh, remember when, when John gets up and starts, like, screaming at the dragons? Yes. At the dragon. Yeah, he, uh, apparently he's saying, like, go, did, did, you, did you hear that one? No, I haven't heard this. Like, he's, so apparently, like, he's, like, telling, like, people are thinking, like, he was trying to distract the dragon so Arya could, like, run by him or something. Like, he's, like, saying, go, go. If you look back at it, like, that's what he's saying, apparently. I don't know. Oh, I, I thought at the time, I actually lost a little bit of respect for John there because I thought he was just throwing, I thought he was throwing a tantrum. What, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, what, what was he going to do from that, like? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was just, I think he just thought, we're dead here. At least I'm going to be yeah, yeah. kind of brave and just, ah, yeah. <laughs> rather than dying, like, way, yeah. kind of quivering behind that pile of, um, like, cushions. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, that, that's, what, that's what some people are thinking anyway. That's why he was screaming out. Where did his dragon go? Oh, shit. Oh. No. We've lost him. Let's call him back. Someone stabbed him with dragon glass. <laughs> Sorry, we lost you there. I'm, bu- I'm back. Okay, we'll just continue on straight away. Uh, where did John's dragon go? Do I did we know? Uh, yeah, app- apparently he's 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 still alive, isn't he? Because I I thought that dragon that was uh, there, like in the middle of Winterfell, at the end. I thought that was John's one that had been raised back to life. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I th- I think he's still flown about somewhere. Okay. Yeah, apparently they're they're both alive. I think they both feature yeah. in the in the trailer for yeah. the next episode. Oh. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. I don't, I don't want to watch the trailer, should you? Oh. I don't think you get much out of it apart from well, obviously that. Yeah. I've told you that now. I don't right. like watching those like little teaser trailer things. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, but I suppose that one dragon, uh, it was it was Daenerys' dragon. Then he took he took off, and he had he could have had maybe what at least. 50 people hanging off him, didn't he? Yeah, well, he, he lived there, didn't he? Yeah, he did well. Yeah. He, he, like, I, those dragons I, are clumsy I, enough at the best times, <laughs> aren't they? I, I, I feel they really, like, underutilised the dragons a lot, didn't they? Yes, absolutely. They couldn't see. <laughs> they couldn't see. snow. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't see either. The episode was dark and it was snowing. Yeah. I didn't know who did, was who. Did, 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 I, I actually didn't have a problem. I thought I, I could see it all quite well, but people are all giving out about how dark it was, weren't they? 
Yeah, I thought that was an that was an issue for me. Yeah, it was pretty. Annoying. Okay, fair enough. I Throw thought. Mm, yeah. Nice, nice. I was happy that they they got the white walkers out of the way that they're gone. I think. Are made, they though? Really? I th I think so. Like I made a mind described it very well. He was like one of the Dara, one of my mates said. Uh, it's like when you're trying to play a game of football, and uh, you're you're obviously up against the opposition and you're trying to fight them. But then there's a, it's really hot in the summer and there's a lot of midges around and they keep flying into your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so it's almost like you're fighting them as well. It's like, what was it, the yeah. World Cup in Russia last year when all those flies were on the pitch? That's kind of like the White Walkers. Are like. Yeah, so it's like, get them fucking out of the way, close the roof, and we'll just go head to head with, you know, the proper Game of Thrones. Yeah. yeah, well, to be honest, I, I always, uh, I thought the White Walkers sort of thing was the best part about it, to be honest. Oh no! I see. I think the White Walkers—they're a sideshow. I think, yeah. like I think the real villain's Cersei. Yeah, yeah, she is. She's a little bit mm. So now we get down to brass taxes, where they get to someone's like, we, like we said last week, Varys is going to do something. Someone's going to be fucked over. Uh, they're going to yeah. start. They surely will start killing some of the the, the more important ones because we were expecting a lot of blood last week, but there was very yeah. little. Right. Yeah, but I, I, I think the reason they didn't kill off that many like main characters last week is because like if they had, it would have sort of taken away from the ending a bit, you know, I think. Yeah, no, I do. I do. I agree. But I think yeah. they've got to start. And like we were talking beforehand, like the writing has gotten a little bit worse now because uh, hasn't yeah. it hasn't a little bit. It's not as dramatic. And maybe it's because their HBO are starting to lean in now. And they're like, well, you can't kill Jon Snow or you can't give anything because we'll, we'll lose some viewers yeah. or... Um, yeah, exactly. So I hope they don't I, I, pussy people out. have definitely said that since like the since the show overtook the books that it's definitely like the writing's got a bit worse, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I've got one one other um issue or concern or question really, I suppose. So Arya um she came out of nowhere to to kill yeah. um the Night King. So and it was yeah. uh, I I loved I loved the way it was done. I loved the way she like transferred the dagger from one hand to the other, <clears throat> and then just yeah. find the wee break in his armor. That was well done. So that was almost like a really well executed um, try, like a wee set piece play where mm. you score yeah. the the try of the season. But no one's there to see it. So did she go yeah. back because Bran was the only one there and Bran, he's not a storyteller. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see, can't see Bran sitting around everybody and saying, gather around, wait till you hear what Arya did. <laughs> Shut up, Bran, you weirdo. <laughs> so it's just like, it's like she would have to then set, tell it in the first, first person, yeah. which kind of, kind of takes yeah, away from yeah. it. She goes, oh no, I did this really cool thing where I like pretended to stab him with one hand, dropped it, <laughs> caught it, and they're all like, Arya, get over yourself. Yeah, yeah. really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that very brilliant. true. Very so true. yeah, I wondered what way that was gonna, because they all just seemed happy enough with what happened. But I'd, maybe they don't appreciate yeah, like, how. Yeah, they're always gonna like believe that she killed an Ike. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Bran will say, as Bran tends to do. Bran, he's he's very understated, isn't he? Mm. He, he would just well, say. I, I... I'm I'm sort of wondering now, like, see, like, that the white work is out of the way. What's like Brand's use now? You know? Yeah, yeah. Like, is he just gonna start being normal again, or is he gonna still be <laughs> just keeping a weirdo? Or what? Yeah, I wonder if he'll snap back into he'll he'll move away from the being the one-eyed yeah. raven. Well, Paul here, yeah. Paul here on sound made a good point that he's been marked by the by the white walkers or by the night king, isn't he, on his arm? Yeah. And now Arya has been marked because she he grabbed her by the throat. Yeah, so, yeah, I heard that one. Yeah, sure. We'll see. We'll see what happens. So what's like going that, on there? They, what does Mark mean? It's been touched, well, maybe, maybe, maybe when he, if he's dead or something, maybe the Marks will go. I don't know. Yeah. I thought you might. No, no. Okay, well, um, I think I, I was happy with the episode anyway. I was... Okay. I, I really enjoyed it, but that's this guy, like, I don't know, maybe I'm a bit stupid or something, but I didn't pick up on a lot of the flaws or anything. <laughs> I I I quite I quite like um ah I was uh, Theon's bit because I uh, like he he he's been he's had a tough hasn't he he has he's brought a lot of it upon himself though Shanners he which he's brought a lot of it upon himself though I think yeah in fair he he did he did he did um but I I thought it was nice seeing a sort of a little bit of well I suppose it was a bit of redemption like he uh, he protected Bran for a while but then got got murked by the Night Kings murked <laughs> <laughs> but it was. <laughs> 
he was he was fighting away for ages, defending Brand, defending Brand, and yeah. then and then all that all that hard work for the most half-hearted compliment from Bran. Bran yeah. goes, you're a good man. Well, what was that, what was that like? Yeah. Yeah, it's like when you've, you've played like 15 years of professional rugby and then you retire at the end and you just get like a round of applause and then Rory Best gets like an unbelievable <laughs> yeah. stadium and just bowing to him. Like, yeah. yeah. No, no Theon, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of glad he's redeemed himself a bit. But still, he kind of like he had he, he had a hard he had a horror time and like sure, think about it a few seasons back he was of course like, the only the only reason he was in the show is just so he's getting to work it but yeah Ra- that guy Ramsey is Ramsey Ramsey Bolton isn't that it yeah yeah, yeah he Ramsey, was a yeah. great character wasn't he mm-hmm. he was good he was good he, he was a bit a bit of a dickhead but he was good like yeah he was more evil than Cersei I would say even yeah like, he was just sadistic yeah he's a bit disturbed he cut yeah. his dick off didn't he yeah he did yeah. yeah. He did, yeah, he and he sent it to his dad. Oh, yeah. then, oh, right. Hmm. Yeah, he sent, he sent his dick to his father. See, you are a man for the details, Shannon. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's why I'm here, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, listen, I think um, oh, we'll leave it there, will we? Yeah, yeah, sure. Here, how, how about um, Cooney's house party? How'd that end up? Yeah, it was actually good. It was good. I think after. Uh, after our episode last week, more people found out about it than probably should have. So there's probably... <laughs> <laughs> there slightly too many people there, but uh, it was good crack. Like. Yeah, was Cardi there? He was, he was, he was. We were chatting about it. Yeah, we all slagging him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, all right. Nice one. Shanners, listen, thanks a lot for coming on, mate. Cheers, man. No worries. Talk to you next you week. Good Cheers, Shanners. See ya. Okay, that was Dave Shannon, our Game of Thrones correspondent. Uh, thank you very much for coming on. I look forward to seeing that episode and then having to talk about it next week. We also put out a hashtag, AskHOR, for your best Twitter questions using the hashtag, AskHOR. And here is my favourite. Given that Carty and Cooning had, Cooney had a kicking percentage bet for this year, what's the weirdest bet either of you made with another pro during your careers? You got one? Uh, no, Cardi and Cooney. That's that. I mean, what were the stakes for this? Like, it to go for dinner, wasn't it? Oh right, okay. Buy dinner. Oh, so that's a bit nice, isn't it? Remember yeah. what bet was it you made where you had to get a, a tattoo on your back? Didn't you? Or that wasn't a bet, was it? Uh, it, it was more of a forfeit. It what? Yeah, that if if Ireland won the Grand Slam, or was it just the championship against championship. France? Championship. Yeah, 2014. Remember you telling yeah, me that? I'd yeah, I get it. Thirteen tattoo. Yeah, fair, fair point. Yeah, I. That was pretty bad. Like, yeah, it was. It was <laughs> for dark days. Still there. Yeah, uh, uh, I once. Um, so Mike, when Mike Glory, the Ulster fullback, was in fourth year in school, like under 15s medallion. I know you're not familiar with. Not a clue. What we call it up there. Weird. <laughs> um, he was playing medallion shield, and a friend of mine teaches in his school. Mm-hmm. He said, this kid is class. He's going to be incredible. Playing 10, obviously. Mm-hmm. Just run, ru- ruling the roost, like just calling all the shots, making all the plays. Totally, everything goes through him. And he was class. He was incredible. I came along to watch him play against Methody. And then I was on the way home, I was like, I wonder what sort of odds you'd get for him playing for Ireland. So I, I emailed Paddy Parr. <laughs> <laughs> They never go back. To they me. never go back. To <laughs> <laughs> Try it now. Well, I mean, you wouldn't get much return now. Would you? You never know. Because yeah. he's very likely to play for Ireland. At what some did stage. you do? You, have you often emailed Paddy Power? Like what? Did that you was say? a complete one-off. I just thought I just took a notion. It was almost more just for the story to be able to find out. I wonder what his odds actually would be. Yeah. We should do that now. We should pick a yeah. pick a young lad who's in school. Maybe we could get someone out there, the likes of my my mate, who kind of knows mm. who's the next best thing coming through. I wonder, like, there was Craig kid. Casey, or he probably... Ah, he's too, he's yeah, too, it's too late. No, you need to get someone when they're 12 or 13. Okay. And you need to get someone whose dad never played for Ulster or Ireland or never... Mm. Then you get longer odds. Do, do you remember there was, a, there was a Welsh footballer who played for Wales at the age of 16 and his granddad had put money on him. A decent really? bit of money, actually, made... Made made a good bit of money out of it. I don't know what it was, what's the rods he got, but yeah, he cashed in when his grandson played for Wales. Wow. 
Football, this is. Yeah, yeah. I don't know who that was, you know. Yeah, I know. Well, that's the guy Ethan Lampard, was it? Oh, that'd be great if you came up with that. That'd be that'd be brilliant. <laughs> I was either thinking of him or else the lad who plays for Liverpool. They they loan out sometimes. He was talented. <clears throat> but Ampadu played against Ireland and um, pretty good. Yeah. But this is like a few years ago though, and he's been play- he playing since he's sixteen. So. So how much money are we talking? How much did Granddad make? I I'm, I think he who, made something like a hundred grand. New hip. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, those wee stair stair things the, yeah, yeah. the thing they bring up the stairs yeah, yeah. nice one um, yeah if anyone has suggestions for young lads we can make a few <laughs> sweet <laughs> catch up <laughs> <laughs> let us know uh, that's great keep those questions coming in please we love those random ones um, so thank you very much for that what was his name or her name David Curtis. Ben uh, Woodburn is the other one I was just before. <laughs> Who was Ben it? Woodburn? It could be him, but that's good. That's my two guesses. Again, yeah. if I'm wrong, somebody let me know on Twitter or yeah. in the comment section. I know it was a vague enough story for me. I didn't have enough information. Mm. Didn't prep it though. I mean, it was just. It's fine. So we'll get there. We're just rolling with it. We'll get there. This is what we do. Right. Thank you everybody for your comments, questions, for listening on all your favorite apps and for watching us on YouTube. A big, big thank you to everyone that was involved in making the show. Paul, Dermot, Anthony and Pat. This has been Baz and Andrew's House of Rugby here on Joe together with Guinness. Party on. Party on. Thanks for keeping us company. 